Thank you. And Mr. President, I ask to speak in morning business. Without objection. Thank you. I, I am here today to express my concerns with the Supreme Court's recent decision in the Hobby Lobby case and the steps that we're taking, hopefully this week, to protect a woman's right to make her own health care decisions. And I want to thank Senators Murray and Udall for their leadership on this issue and for introducing the Not, Not My Boss's Business Act. Um, and I, I appreciate hearing from the Republican leader about their interest in supporting women's access to contraceptive care. And, and I hope that's something that we can all agree on. But the issue here is not direct, it's not just access to that care, it's the cost of that care. And when you charge women more for contraceptive coverage, then you are denying them access to that care. The legislation that's been introduced by Senators Murray and Udall that I'm a co-sponsor of will prevent employers from being involved in an employee's health care decisions, and it will reverse the Supreme Court's decision. Throughout my career in office, I have fought to ensure that women have access to important contraceptive services and that women are able to make their own decisions about their health care with their doctors and with their families. In 1999, when I was governor of New Hampshire, I signed into law a bipartisan bill that required insurance companies to cover prescription contraceptives, the issue that we are debating right now. I signed that law with strong bipartisan support because both Republicans and Democrats knew that it was the right thing to do. And in fact, that legislation passed in the New Hampshire House with 121 Democratic votes and 120 Republican votes and two independents. And that law, passed in 1999, has now provided thousands of New Hampshire women with the ability to access the medications that they and their doctors decide are right for them because they have that insurance coverage to pay for those medications. The Affordable Care Act also established that women would have access to prescription contraceptive services with no co-pays just like New Hampshire did in 1999. And you know, it's interesting, we're having this debate about uh, religious objections. Back in 1999, the legislature appointed a committee to look at whether there were any religious concerns about what we had done. And they came back and reported that this was not an issue. A recent analysis by the Department of Health and Human Services reports that because of the Affordable Care Act, more than 30 million women are now eligible to receive preventive health services, including contraception, with no co-pays. In fact, since 2013, women have saved nearly $500 million in out-of-pocket costs because of the ACA's requirement to cover contraceptive care. The Supreme Court's decision has a real financial bearing on women and their families throughout the country because this ruling will have a profound impact on the health and economic security of women throughout this nation. As noted by Justice Ginsburg in her dissent in the Hobby Lobby case, when high cost is a factor, women are, are more likely to decide not to pursue certain forms of health care treatments that involve contraceptive care. And there are many reasons why a doctor may decide to prescribe contraceptives for a woman's health needs. Contraceptives can be used to treat a broad range of medical issues, hair loss, endometriosis, acne, irregular menstrual cycles. Contraceptives have also been shown to reduce the risk of certain cancers. But just a few weeks ago, the Supreme Court jeopardized that access to affordable preventive health care for too many women. As a result of the Hobby Lobby case, some employers now have the ability to claim religious objections as a justification for not providing contraceptive health care with no co-pays. I understand the host of issues that employers face on a daily basis, and I appreciate the complexities that they face when they decide to offer health insurance coverage to their employees. For example, take Jane Valliere, who owns Hermano's Mexican Restaurant in Concord, New Hampshire. 
I recently had the opportunity to sit down with Jane and to discuss the Hobby Lobby case. Jane made it clear that while she has many choices and decisions to make on a daily basis to keep her business running, she never expected to be put in a position where she could be responsible for making a health care decision for her employees at the restaurant. And like Jane, I don't think it makes sense for employers to make those personal, private health care decisions for their employees. Critical health decisions are simply not an employer's business. Where a woman works should not determine whether she gets insurance coverage that has been guaranteed to her under federal law. And while we don't yet know the full extent of the impact from this ruling, we do know that the Supreme Court's decision turns back progress that women across the country have fought for years to achieve. We must ensure that women have access to the health care services and medications they need, and that means making them affordable, that they are able to make their own decisions about their care with their doctors and their families. Thankfully, we have an opportunity this week to correct the Supreme Court's short-sighted decision. This week, the Senate can stand up for women and pass the Not My Boss's Business Act. A woman's health care decisions should be made with her doctor, with her family, with her faith, not by her employer, with her employer's faith. And uh, I urge my colleagues to support this bill, and I yield the floor. Thank you, Mr. President.